Hi, and welcome to episode 11 of Understanding Darktable. I thought in this video, we'll look at the idea of presets and styles and how they can help us to apply a consistent look to a group of images without having to apply every single parameter and module on a per image basis. So just looking at these four test images that I shot a couple of weeks ago in my yard, I've got my lemons here. I'll just go to the darkroom module. Now, I've talked already in previous videos about this second icon, the little hamburger icon on each module, and that is your preset menu. What I can do is, let's, let's go with monochrome. I want to activate monochrome for this image, and I want to maybe make it blue. So what I can do is go to the preset menu and store new preset. And I will call this blue two, and I'll go monochrome with blue filter and click OK. Now, if I want to apply that look to any other image, I can simply go to another image, like this one, go to the monochrome module, go to the presets, select blue two, and that look is now applied to that image. whoop de doo nothing really special about that. Okay, so let's edit this preset. You can see that when we have multiple presets, once you've chosen a preset, it gets a bold font in the preset menu, which lets you know that you're actually on that particular preset. And once you've got that bold font, these two options change. Edit this preset, delete this preset. So let's delete that preset. Do you really want to delete the preset blue too? Yes, I do. So that's now gone. Hasn't changed the processing of the image because we'd already applied that. All we've done is remove that preset from the preset menu. So let's go to the green preset. So it's still monochrome, but with a green filter. Now, green is highlighted in a bold font. If we choose edit this preset, then we will get the ability to rename the preset and to add some description to this particular preset. Now, because I had checked that first box, auto apply this preset to matching images, that has then shown me all of this extra data. Normally, if that was unchecked, you wouldn't see it. You would just see a box which would look something like that. So when we tick auto apply this preset to matching images, Darktable presents us with the opportunity to define all of these values which should be taken into account to consider an image to be a matching image. So let's look at this. Model refers to the model of your camera. Maker refers to the manufacturer of your camera. Lens will mean the description of the lens as it's stored in the EXIF metadata for each image. ISO is simply the ISO that the image was shot at or the range of images that you might want to process. Exposure, personally, maybe I'm being a little bit pedantic here, but I really wish that that was renamed shutter speed because when I first saw it and I said exposure, I'm thinking, well, how do you determine exposure? And when you look at the values that are presented in that list, you go, oh, it's shutter speed. Okay, fair enough. So maybe that's just me being pedantic. We can choose by aperture, we can choose by focal length, and we can choose whether we want JPEGs, RAW, or HDR images, or all, or any combination thereof. And collectively, all of these parameters can determine whether an image is deemed to be matching and therefore should have this green filter monochrome preset applied to them. So. As you can see, I've been mucking around with this. I've put in a focal length of minimum of 70 mil, maximum of 80 mil. So basically, anything that I shoot at 75 mil on my 2875 zoom should get this green monochrome preset automatically applied. So let's try that in the real world and see whether it works. So I'll jump back to light table view. I've just been out in the yard. I've shot some more test images and I'm going to import that whole folder. So 2018, 0808. Click on open. 
These are the images that I've just gone and shot. It doesn't look like any of them have been automatically set to monochrome. Let's have a look at the image information. Are there any actually shot with a focal length of 75 mil? Well, that's a no. That's 28 mil. That's a no. That's a no. Ah, that one's 75 mil. So is that one. And that one. Nope. Nope. Yes. So, these three images here and this last image were all shot at 75 mil. Yet it does not appear that that monochrome preset has been automatically applied. Let's just try something. Let's just grab, oh, to hell with it. Let's just grab all of them. And let's go export, yep, to my phone. That will do. Uh, I don't think I've got them there, but I'll just select overwrite just in case. So I'm going to export all nine of these images and we can see from those thumbnails they are all still very much in colour according to what I'm seeing on my screen and presumably it looks like it's colour on your screen as well. So once those images have exported we will jump over to my pictures folder, to my phone and these are the images being exported to disk as we watch in real time. Let's have a look at these. That's still colour, that's still colour, that's still colour. Ah, oh, what do you know? It is actually monochrome. So is that, so is that. Didn't expect that one to be, or that one. Absolutely did expect that one to be monochrome. So what's going on here? They've had that preset applied, but for some reason Darktable does not update the thumbnails in the Lighttable view until you either change the level of zoom in the light table view or you open the image in the darkroom. So if I was to set this like so, suddenly they've all refreshed just because I zoomed the light table. But now I've zoomed back out to where I was and suddenly they're not showing the monochrome processing. So a little inconsistent to be sure, but if I double click on one of these images that I know is monochrome, because we've just seen the exported image, we know that it was, and we go into the dark room, what do you know? Now it's showing with its monochrome processing. And if I go back to the light table, that thumbnail has now refreshed, but the others still have not. Unfortunately, I see this is a little bit of a bug, but as long as we're aware of it, we can deal with it. So if we go to these other images, they will also show that they have got their monochrome processing, even though the thumbnail wasn't actually showing up in the light table view. And there's the final image. Okay, so that's automatically applying a preset to a bunch of images based on certain criteria. And you can do that with every module in the darkroom view. So let's suppose you had one of those really cheap, nasty knockoff, you know, Russian wide angle lenses that you pick up for 50 bucks on eBay. And maybe it vignettes really heavily at the outer edges for every image you ever shoot with it. So you could perhaps go into the vignette module and create a vignette that was designed to counteract the natural vignetting of that lens and then automatically apply that vignetting preset to every single image that was shot with that lens based on the EXIF metadata. So that's how you can use that particular feature of the presets menu. Now you will notice that there was also this option only show this preset for matching images. If you check that box and we click OK, when we go to the monochrome module and we look at the list of presets here, we can see red filter, blue and green because this particular image matched the criteria that we set up for that filter.
If I was to go to one of these images that I shot at 28 mil, when we look at the monochrome module and we look at the preset menu, the green filter does not appear because this image doesn't match the criteria for that particular preset that we saved. So if you suddenly go into a module and you don't see a preset that you know you saved, it could be because you told it to only show that preset for images which matched that criteria, in which case you will need to go and find an image that matches that criteria, like so, in order to get that preset back on the list so that you could then edit it, uncheck that box, and now that preset will appear for every single image in our database. So if we go back to that image, we can now see the green filter is available. Okay, so that's presets. And you can store a preset for every module and apply you know, multiple presets to images based on certain things. You know, it might be that you want to apply a noise reduction module for any image shot at 1600 ISO or greater. There's so many ways that you can use this. It's very good. Okay, let's have a look at styles. Let's suppose that I come back to this image here, which we've applied our monochrome green filter to. And let's suppose we wanted to also apply a little bit of a tone curve to this to give it a little bit more contrast. And let's suppose we wanted to maybe crop it square. Yeah, why not? Let's do that. Okay, so we can now see in our history module on the left hand side here that there's that monochrome process, there's the tone curve, and there's the crop and rotate module that made it square. If we wanted to apply all three of those things to multiple images, that's where you would use a style. So we go to our light table view, click on the styles module, and we would create a new style. And again, we get these first two text fields, one for the title, one for the description. And I'll just call this EP11. And we will call it monochrome tone curve and square crop. Now, by default, when you create a new style, every state from the history of this particular image will appear and will appear checked in this particular dialog box. But we don't want the sharpen, the orientation, the base curve, or the denoise, simply because every other image we import into Darktable is automatically going to get some of those things applied and we don't need to apply them a second time. So we only want to include the particular steps that we're interested in. In this case, the monochrome preset, the tone curve preset, and the crop. So we uncheck all of the others, click on save, and now we have a style called EP11, and if we wait for the text pop-up, we can see there from the description, monochrome tone curve and square crop, which was what I entered into that description field, and then a list of the modules that are included in this style. So now I can go to multiple other images. I'll just select those five images there. And to apply that style, I simply double click the name of the style in that styles module. Double click. And now all of those images have been updated with all three steps, the monochrome, the tone curve, and the square crop. So that's working with styles. Now, unfortunately, styles cannot be automatically applied based on those criteria like we saw with presets. So just be aware that you can't do that automatically. You can do it at the preset level, but not at the styles level. If we wanted to edit one of these styles. We could select the style, click on edit, and we can change the name, we can change the description. We can choose not to include any of those steps that were originally saved, but we can also 
add to this style any of the other states from the history of this particular image which are currently not active. There's nothing there that I want to activate in this particular instance, but just understand that if there were other modules that had been activated on that particular image and you liked that and you thought, yeah, I want to include that with my EP11 style, then you could simply choose it from the list of inactive modules. Let's just put orientation in there for the heck of it and click save. And now if we go back to edit that style, we will see that orientation is now included as part of that style. Click on save, obviously delete, you would simply select that style, click on delete, and that style is now removed from your styles module. Okay, so that's essentially working with presets and modules. Hopefully you found that interesting and you can use that to speed up your workflow. See you in the next one.